Number one, standard press fit. This is probably the easiest way to add a magnet to your design. Just make a cutout about the same size as the magnet and press fit it into place. This works okay as long as you have a well calibrated printer. Some drawbacks to the design is that the magnets are difficult to insert if your printer doesn't have good tolerances, or the magnets might be too loose and easily fall out of the socket. You can always add some glue to the magnet to keep it in place, but I think some of the other ways to add magnets are worth considering before you get out the super glue. Another issue is that the magnets are difficult to remove if they are repelling each other. Number two, press fit with the wall. This is pretty similar to the standard press fit, but with one exception. There's a dividing wall between the magnets. One benefit to using this design over the standard press fit is that the magnets usually don't fall out since the magnets are being pulled deeper into the socket instead of out of the socket like with the standard press fit. Besides not being able to flip the magnets around, this setup also reduces the strength of the magnets since there's plastic between them. So be sure to use strong magnets for this to work correctly. Number three, blind pouch. Unlike the first two options, using a blind pouch or a blind channel for the magnets prevents the magnet from being able to come out. Basically, you make a cutout where you push the magnet into place. For this to work, you will need to add a small amount of tolerances for the part that will require bridging. Another tip is to make sure the wall where the magnets are attracting each other is as thin as possible, similar to the press fit with wall example. Around one millimeter thickness is what I usually shoot for. This works out to about two layers of plastic. Like the push fit, it's usually pretty difficult to remove the magnet if you get the polarity wrong without destroying the print, but overall the magnet is more secure using this method. Number 4. Overhang The overhang method is a method I recently started using on the sumo enclosure that I've been working on for a while and has worked well for me. The idea is that you essentially add a 45 degree overhang at the end of the channel to keep the magnet from being pulled out of the part. The benefit to the 45 degree angle is that you can print from any orientation without worrying about supports. The reason that I like this method is that it allows you to easily flip the magnet around by pushing it out of the part if you put it in the wrong way without having to reprint the part. For the overhang, I've been using an offset of 0.8 millimeters and then extruding out 0.8 millimeters of height so I can apply a 45 degree chamfer. This works out to two layers for the Prusa XL at 0.4 millimeter layer height or four layers printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height with the Prusa Mark IV or other printer. As far as the clearance goes, I've been making the cutout about 0.2 millimeters bigger than the magnet. Number five, print balls. This method is pretty much the same as a bomb pouch, except this time you trap the magnet from all directions. The way this works is you create the open space for the magnet and then pause your print before the hole gets covered up. You insert the magnets into the print and then resume the print. The benefit to this method is that the magnets are invisible once the print is done. But if you get the polarity wrong, then you have to redo the whole print. I've used all five of these magnet integration methods in my designs throughout the years. But the one I use most often now is the overhang method. I like it the most because it lets you reorient the magnets if you need to while still looking good and keeping the attraction between the magnets strong. Alright, so that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, be sure to check this one out right here. Thanks for watching.